Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to our tafsir class. We are doing the kitab known as Al Jami'u li Ahkam al Quran of Imam al Qurtubi rahimahullah. And tonight, inshallah ta'ala, we are continuing on from ayah number six of that particular of Surah Al Inshiqaq, which we were doing still last week and the week, the time before that and the time before that. But anyhow, let us begin. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. <coughs> so we are starting from here. It says, Qulu ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal insanu innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadihan famulaqih. Fa amma man utiya kitabahu biyaminih. Fa sawfa yuhasabu hisaban yasira. Wa yanqalibu ila ahlihi masrura. These are the four ayat that we are doing tonight. The three ayat. No, four ayat. Four ayat that we are doing tonight. So the verbatim translation, as we'll always start with, is Ya ayyul insanu innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadihan famulaqi. So when I gave the verbatim each translation previously, I said that you are working, you are laboring towards your Lord, uh, what uh, you are exerting yourself towards your Lord, famulaqi, and you will, you know, you're gonna meet, uh, you're gonna meet the, it, the end result. Uh, you're going to meet Allah, you're going to meet the year after, etc., etc., different opinions, but you will get to that in the tafsir itself. So, that's that ayah, the first one. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ kitaba. As for the one who is given his kitab, where? بِيَمِينِهِ In his right hand. Then, فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابَ يَسِيرًا Then he will have an easy account, easy reckoning in his case. وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا And he will return to his family happy you know he'll be very happy because you know it's like if you are a person uh, studying or a person who's going for a driver license or a gun license or whatever it may be you know you doing some sort of test and you get given here's your certificate people are always happy because it's like i work towards this and here's the, uh, the result so anyway Let's move into the tafsir. He says, قوله تعالى يا أيها الإنسان إنك كادح إلى ربك كدح المراد بالإنسان الجنس أي يا ابن آدم وكذا رواه سعيد عن قتاله يا ابن آدم إن كدحك لضعيف فمن استطاع أن يكون كدحه في طاعة الله فليفعل ولا قوة إلا بالله so starting in ila rabbika kadha. So he says that ya ayyul insan. Insan is the one who is being addressed. Who is insan? He says ya insan refers to the jinns, the type, meaning all of mankind. All of mankind is being addressed. And so I say, hey, ya ibn Adam, oh uh, children of Hadrat Adam alayhi salam. Meaning all human beings, all of you are being addressed in this ayah. Wakada rawa sa'idun an qatada. Okay, and وكذا رواه سعيد عن قتادة يا ابن آدم. And this is like what Imam Sa'id reports from Imam قتادة who said that uh, interpreting the ayah يا يا ابن آدم أو son of Hadrat Adam عليه السلام. إن كدحك لا ضعيف. Verily, your the work that you are doing is weak. فمن استطاع أن يكون كدحه في طاعة الله فليفعل. So whoever it's whoever is capable of making his spending his time using his effort in the obedience of Allah, فليفعل, then let him do so. ولا قوة إلا بالله. And there is no power or might except with Allah. وقيل هو معين. So the first one said it is general. It applies to all of mankind. Second viewpoint is that it is specific. قال مقاتل يعني الأسود بن عبد الأسد ويقال يعني أبي بن ابن خلف ويقال يعني جميع الكفار يعني يا أيها الكافر إنك كادح والكدح في كلام العرب العمل والكسب والكسب 
So the second opinion, it's saying it is specific. So Imam Qatil said it referring to Al Aswad ibn Abdul Asad. Another opinion says it refers to Ubay ibn Khalaf. Another one says it now it applies to all of the kuffar, meaning Aw Kafir. You are your inna kakadihun. You are working. Yeah, the actions that you are doing, whatever it is that you do, ila rabbika kadahan You know, the wherever it's uh, you, whatever you think you're doing. At the end of the day, it all ends up in front of Allah, if you want to take it in that way. And you will answer for everything that you had done. So he says, Kadah in the Arabic, uh, in the Kalam al-Arab, in the Arabic language, it refers to al-amalu wa al-kasbu, meaning the actions that you do, and the kasb, meaning the what you earn as a result of your actions. Qala ibn Muqbil, wa maddahru illa taratani faminhuma, أموت وأخرى أبدغ العيش أتحو وقال آخر ومضت بشاشة كل عيش صالح كل عيش صالح وبقيت أتحو للحياة وأنصب Okay, moving on, he says, "A amalu." So another uh, meaning in essence of kadihun kadha aftahu, meaning amalu. I work. Warwa abbahak an ibn Abbas inna kadihun a rajun ila Rabbika kadhan a rujuan la mahala famulaqihi a mulaqin Rabbika. So Imam Bahak, uh, he reports from Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhumah, who said that in kadihun, that verily, what is now, what did Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhumah interpret kadih as? He said it is raji' return, that you verily you are going to return ila rabbika kadha, that you are going to definitely, you are going to return, no question about it, to your Lord. So famulaqihi, and you will meet with he, here he say mulaqin rabbaka you will meet in other words you will come in front of allah and answer for your deeds so you know it's like you're going to meet this person doesn't mean they're going to see allah not at all not for the kuffar we did touch this previously but here it means that you will come and stand in front of allah and have to give account for your deeds in other words waqila mulaqin amalaka uh, so another opinion says uh, the famulaqi he he uh, who ha you know that is the the ha yeah in the thing uh, in the sentence yeah you would say it as it or he you know it uh, it's used in both ways so if you say it then it refers to your actions if you say he then it refers to Allah so you will meet him or you will meet it you mean you will meet Allah or you will meet your deeds. القتبي إنك كادح أي عامل ناصب في معيشتك إلى لقاء ربك. شيمام القتبي he said that you are working in your life and it's taking you to a end point which is the meeting of your Lord. One way or the other, you're not going to be here forever. Whatever you do in this world, it leads. It's all leading to a point. That point is when you meet Allah. والملاقات بمعنى اللقاء. أي تلقى ربك بعملك وقيل أي تلاقي كتاب عملك لأن العمل قد انقضى ولهذا فأما من أوتي كتابه بيمينه Okay, let's do this part here, finish first. So he says, as far you will meet it, the mulaqat, the, the meeting of here, is in the meaning of اللقاء, لقاء means to meet. أي تلقى ربك بعملك, mean you will meet your Lord with your actions. وَقِيلَ تُلَاقِي كِتَابَ عَمَلِكَ So the meeting here is now said not to be meeting Allah, according to the second opinion. Rather, you will meet the book of your deeds. Because your deeds had now come to an end. And that is why he says, Allah says in the ayah, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ As for the one who is given his book of deeds in his right hand. So you will be moving towards Allah and you will meet it. Meet the, the actions that you are doing. Hence, the one who is given his book in his right hand, the deeds that you had done, being put in your right hand is a sign of uh, passing. Being put in your left hand is a sign of failing. So, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ قول تعالى فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ وَهُوَ الْمُؤْمِنِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا لَا مُنَاقَشَ فِيهِ This is as for the ayah, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ As for the one who is given his book in his right hand, and that is the believer. 
فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا Then he will have an easy reckoning. لا مناقشة فيه. There'll be no difficult, no problems, no uh, heavy issues and stuff like this. When you have your pass, you pass. كذا روي عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من حديث عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من حوسب يوم القيامة عذبا قالت فقلت يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أليس قد قال الله فأما من أوتي كتابه بيمينه فسوف يحاسب حسابا يسيرا فقال ليس, ليس ذاك الحساب إنما ذلك العرض ومن نوقش الحساب يوم القيامة عذبا أخرجه البخاري ومسلم والترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح. So uh, he says that this uh, what he's been telling you now is reported from a hadith as well of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which Adhra Aisha radiyallahu anha reports. She said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever is taken to account on the day of Qiyamah he will be punished. So she said Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did Allah not say in the Quran فأما من أوتي كتابه بيمينه فسوف يحاسب حسابا يسيرا that whoever has been given his book in his right hand then he will be uh, you know like uh, have an easy reckoning so uh, رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم replied by saying ليس ذاك الحساب that is not حساب that is not a reckoning over there إنما ذلك العرض that's the you know like we would say the the giving of your the handing out of the books the pass and the fails so but Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man nuqich al-hisaba yawm al-qiyamati u'ziba. When you have to, in, in other words, when you are put on the stand and investigated and you have to answer for everything, then you will be, then you will be punished. In other words, when Allah gives you an easy uh, reckoning, it is the fact that you did many sins, but Allah forgives you, conceals it, things of the sort. So, you know, you pass through easily. You know, uh, in different parts of the world, in different uh, avenues, different ways, people have different things. So, you know, uh, people can, you can not exactly not speaking per se, but you have two people, they write a, a post. One person you like, so you read his post, maybe this, maybe everything's not 100%, but you pass by without a, a comment. But then there's uh, the second person writes a, a post and it's like, this person, you're not going to let him get away with anything. And thus, you go over his post with a fine-toothed comb, and you find 110 mistakes, even down to his grammatical errors, where he put his comma in the wrong place, and he used a colon instead of a semicolon, and, and things of the sort. Then, you know, it's like you pull out from one uh, little the post over there, you pull out 42 mistakes. You know, that sort of thing. So, because why? The end result is not good for him hence why you can uh, uh, find all such things so in a similar manner not exactly the same but a similar manner that when you are put on the stand and investigated to that degree then it's a sign that you are going to be punished because if you are not going to be punished that sort of thing would not be done to you then you would have a hisaba yasira in other words so the Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, and Imam Tirmidhi, rahimahumullah, all of them report this hadith, and Imam Tirmidhi say it is a, an authentic hadith. Then the next ayah, Allah says, وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ أَزْوَاجِهِ فِي الْجَنَّةِ مِنَ الْحُورِ الْعِينِ مَسْرُورًا أي مُغْتَبِطًا قَرِيرَ الْعِينِ So then the next ayah, Allah says, and he will return to his family in a happy state. So who is his family? So Imam Al-Qurtubi says, Azwajihi fil Jannah. His wives in Jannah from the Hur al -Ain. Now why he mentions this over here, it is on account of the fact that there are some people who are not married, who died not having been married, and yet they have to pass through the same thing. They too will have to get their book of deeds. They too will, you know, so as a result, Everybody will have their wife from the Hur al -Ain. But obviously, at the same time, too, the same applies to women. Women also will have to come and stand there. Women also will have to get their book of deeds. Don't mean they're going to send the husband to go and fetch their book of deeds, pick it up, put a loaf of bread on your way home. Don't work that way. And then, at the same time, women are, are not going to be having a, a Hur al -Ain for themselves. Whether women or men, you know, there's no such thing as a male hur. Some women still labor under this uh, misconception or this 
idea that they'd like to believe in that they're going to be having male whores over there. Ain't no such thing. So anyway, women will come and they will answer and they'll get their book and they're not going to be having uh, some whore waiting for them. Not a man whore, not a woman whore. So her, she will return to her family, her husband, etc., etc., and if she was not married in this world, then Allah will marry them off in the year after. Because here's the thing, every person will in Jannah will be married. There will be no single uh, people, there'll be no monks. You know, you can keep your monkhood elsewhere. But in Jannah, every single person will be married. And if anybody died in this world, if, it's a, if a woman died in this world and she was not married, she will be married to one of the human beings of this world. So, you know, it's not like... Uh, I can go and pick and choose and, you know, um, build my own whore man. It, it don't work that way either. Some people uh, would hope that to be the case, but it doesn't work that way. So if a woman has died in this world not having been married, then Allah will marry her to one of the human inmates of Jannah who had passed through this world as well. But in any case, Imam al is saying here that uh, he will be... Uh, he will go now to his wife from, from the Hawr al-Ain. Masrura, a, you know, he'll be very happy, you know, uh, the coolness of his eyes and everything of the sort here because, like I gave the example previously, you passed your license, you passed your whatever it is that you studied and things, you got your certificate, you're returning home happy, you know, it's like coming to give the good news. So that sort of thing. ويقال إنها نزل إنها نزلت في أبي سلمة بن عبد الأسد وهو أول من هاجر من مكة إلى المدينة وقيل إلى أهله الذين كانوا له في الدنيا وليخبرهم بخلاصه وسلامته والأول قول قتادة أي إلى أهله الذين قد أعدهم الله له في الجنة. Okay, so this was the first opinion he'll return to the Hurul Ain. Second opinion he said it was really revealed with regards to Hadrat Abu Salama ibn Abdul Asad, who was the first person to make hijrah from Makkah to Medina. Another opinion says that he will return to his family that used to be with him in this world, meaning the normal understanding, as we would say, you lived in this world, you, you had a wife, you had children, you had parents, you had siblings, whatever. So you return back home now to your family. Like if you were in this world, if you um, were studying, you, you finally passed, you come back to your family, you know, you tell your siblings, your parents, your wife, your children, they say, I passed, you, that sort of thing. So, the family that you used to have in this world, you'll return to them now. You'll tell them, you know, I'm free, I'm safe, I've passed. And the first view is the view of Imam Qatada, the original one over here. On the ayah itself, it was the view of Imam Qatada saying that you will return to the family to the family that Allah has prepared for you in Jannah. Family meaning your wife, meaning your wife from the Hurul Ain. So Imam Qatada held that opinion. Other Imam held different opinions. With that being said, we end a bit early for tonight, inshallah, because we started late at the same time. So we ending with this point uh, for tonight, inshallah, and next week we can. Resume again at a normal uh, time. It will be still quarter past nine nonetheless, but anyway, that will be next week, uh, inshallah ta'ala. Until then, we end for tonight and we say, Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad, subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.